what did your father do for a living? And my father said, oh, he, he's a tailor. So this person said, well, why didn't you become a tailor? Why, why are you becoming a lawyer? Having a vow at the end of your name wasn't the easiest thing to get into certain legal positions and how that evolves, how you move from it. It's part of history. It was very rare and unusual for Italian-American lawyers to be head of major law firms in Philadelphia or even be members of major law firms in Philadelphia. You picture the bar from 1933 and there are two Italians and that's it. Italians of American descent were not very instrumental in, in large law firms by any means. Over the years, that really changed. That was a big, big change. The Justinian Society became um, a force at the bar. We became uh, first-class citizens, so to speak. The Justinian Society was founded in 1935 by men who were and men. There were no women who were immigrants. They were here. They were lawyers trying to get jobs. Soon after my grandfather got involved, he then ran for judge, and he was the first Italo-American magistrate in federal court, and he had the support of the Justinian Society. And the idea was that there were Italian-Americans here who wanted to make a mark. A little row house kid with, I mean, he's the first person in my family to go to college, let alone law school. And the Justinian Society gave me a sense of identity. Just everything the society does is, is geared toward improving the quality of justice in Philadelphia and in particular for Italian-American lawyers. They always say that the society basically started in um, uh, Judge DeBona's chambers with salami sandwiches. Now, I doubt that that's, well, I shouldn't say I doubt that's the case. I mean, they were the early days. We'd meet uh, around a table in Judge DeBona's chambers. We'd have uh, uh, our uh, salami, our brazout, our, uh, our cheese, and we'd make sandwiches and drink a little wine. Italian cold cuts and Italian bread and sharp provolone cheese and white wine and red wine. G. Fred De Bono was really one of the uh, key members in the organization, and when I clerked for him back in 1978-79, he brought me to a luncheon. It was a small group, and basically it was very, very friendly and intimate and sitting side by side were jurists, legislators, and law clerks. I really relish the, the early days because of the camaraderie and the closeness of, of the members. And, I, and I, I see that today, even though we've grown, we still are a very close-knit family. One of the reasons why we exist is to further the careers of our members. It's very successful, young lawyers and major firms doing what they love, uh, and yet not forgetting, of course, the connection to this, this heritage that binds us all. There was a sense of we all share something, and we all share the same goal, which is to be the leaven and the bread of the, the Italian legal community, to raise them up. I really don't believe I would have been chancellor of the Philadelphia Bar Association had I not received the full support of the Justinian Society. I, I believe that in my bones. I guess one of the highlights is uh, when Justice Alito came to one of our luncheons. To grace us not only with his presence, but with his stories of his heritage and, and how it helped uh, shape him. I think that just really sort of elevated the society in the eyes of the Philadelphia legal community that someone like a sitting Supreme Court Justice would, would come and speak at one of our luncheons. I was the first female chancellor of the Justinian Society, which was quite a brave move then because many of our original members were still alive. And of course, in the Italian American community, women, um, it, I think it was a shock just to see them at the bar, let alone at the head of the Justinian Society. I was on the second female chancellor following Barbara Capozzi, who was the first. And this organization did not see that you were um, a woman in a predominantly male profession. They gave you the opportunity to shine. And then I was so proud that, to have my daughter, Gina, um, become the first, as far as I know, third generation um, uh, Italo American Justinian to become the chancellor. The, I am the only chancellor to be a third generation chancellor. 
uh, following in my grandfather Edward Furious footsteps and then my father Richard Furious footsteps. So I have a passion that goes really deep for this organization. The scholarship program has significantly uh, taken off. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's benefited the, the kids at all of the area law schools. And all of the promise that uh, we noticed in the evaluation of their applications blossoming into full glory. Uh, Fiervanti Scholarship Fund. Uh, unfortunately, it was due to the death of, of Jules Fiervanti, who was just one of the greatest people uh, you'd ever want to meet. Also, very dedicated Justinian, uh, as is obvious from the fact that the scholarship was begun in his name. We've given over $300,000 in scholarships since its inception a little bit more than 10 years ago. This year at our 75th anniversary, we're going to be giving our first Nicholas J. Lisi scholarship. And Nick was the chancellor when I was in law school. And it's been a great loss. We've lost Nick this year to cancer. And he was so passionate about scholarship and philanthropy and so passionate about giving back. The main function and event of the Justinian Society was our annual Christmas party, which was legendary. I don't know whether the judges met, uh, came for the camaraderie or the food, but they got both. So many times it involves food and eating and celebration. And my dad jokingly said they should change the name to the Just Eaten In Society because it seems like every time you turn around we're, we're going to a lunch or a dinner. And that's definitely part of it, but it's, it's just, I think, part of the Italian-American tradition. We have such a storied past today with this new bar which is so full of not just diversity, but a becomes an organization where we are able to promote our own members, but also just connect with other people in the Philadelphia Bar because we're Justinian and you automatically have that connection. Over the past year or two, uh, our membership has grown a great deal. Every month we get several new membership applications in and uh, people are actually approaching us. Well, we're always looking at planning for the future. That's, just, that's a given. Um, you know, it's interesting, the, this listening to some of the older folks in some of the board meetings and the stories they tell about how society was in the 60s and 70s and why the Justinian Society was there then, it's really quite different now. So I think that going forward and planning the future, we've got to get a good group of young people involved to continue to carry the tradition of the Justinian Society forward. I think the Justinian Society in 75 years won't say, serve the same purpose that the originators of it serve, but I think it'll be a, more a group like we are today, where we're giving, help, helping give leadership to the Bar Association, where we're encouraging our members to be excellent lawyers, and men, the men and women in the profession will continue to grow. And I think the agenda looking forward is to, of course, keep the camaraderie, keep the personal touch, which sometimes we can lose. Well, it, it's really about the people. The best people that I've met uh, have been Justinians, uh, and among them are some of the best lawyers in Philadelphia. It's just a wonderful collegial organization, and if you put your toe in, you'll want to dive in completely.